Welcome back to Gin and Teacups. Here's the interview with the Heartbreaks. Since they come from a small town, they pick Manchester instead of London. We asked them what's the reasoning behind this. Well, for a start, the fact that it's only an hour on the train. Yeah, we could afford the train there. That was one of the main reasons. Uh, what does it have that London does that? I think Manchester attracts really um, quite interesting people, really radical people, really cool people. Um, of course, it's got an amazing musical heritage. I suppose London has as well. Yeah. You can't really argue with that. But I think we wanted to live in the north of England still. Next, we asked them how much do the places they live in influence the way they look at things and consequentially what you feel and they're right. Oh, well, Morecambe, for example, is such a huge influence upon us. I don't think we could have happened anywhere else. So in Morecambe, you know, um, I think it's really infiltrated our music completely. Um, so in that sense, it's, it's really affected us. That's the biggest influence, Morecambe. When it comes to writing, do they actually think emotions are to be collected in tranquility? Or would they rather take a snapshot of a moment exactly as it happens? Second option, I'd say. <laughs> I'd go with option two, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. don't because like you're saying before, all the um all the songs are like a cert they've all <laughs> happened, they're all true, everything that's in the lyric. And so I think it's uh, very much a snapshot of a point in time, the way that uh, Joel would have been feeling, and you know, uh, yeah, I think I think that like I think that kind of breeds kind of the best form of creativity, really, in whatever field you're doing it. If it, if something, a specific moment, uh, spurs you on to produce something, I generally think it's going to be part of me. Fail. I generally think it's going to be quite powerful. So yeah, I'd definitely uh, go with you. Your second option there. And also, we, we don't experience tranquility very much, do we? No. no, no so. <laughs> the lyrics of Jazz Don't You Know were posted on MySpace as a script. Does it mean they think life is a stage or is art a stage? What is the relationship between the two? Basically, which one makes the other? <sighs> wow, <laughs> these are good questions. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, do, what? It's fun. Art mimics life. Yeah. I'd say I or think our preferred form of our art. preferred form of art mimics, mimics life. life. Yes, uh, but then I suppose it'd be entirely different if we were conceptual artists. <laughs> yeah. think, but, but at the end of the day, we just hit bits of wood with metal strings on, and he just hits drums and things. You know, that's I guess try yeah. and get stuff off our chest. Through that a, lot of, a lot of our best started to live in. All my favourite bands have uh, so this, you know, a few times. All my favourite bands have been bands that. Uh, you can totally immerse yourselves in not not just yeah. the tunes, but like all, you know all the reference points. And like whether it's like like the Libertines or the Smiths or you know it, that lineage of English guitar bands. There's always been like a, a little world in which you can um, immerse yourself in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think that we maybe when when we do things like that when we say you know this is our little world, come and be a part of it. I don't think we're doing that necessarily to be artistic as such. I think we're kind of uh, <coughs> doing it because it's the only it's the only thing we can do, you know, we're like we're we're just playing our songs and doing our thing but ho hopefully people want to get involved in that as well. So I don't think we're doing it as a sort of artistic statement, it's just otherwise we'll be That's just the way we we'll be working in fish and chip shop. Yeah we burn all our bridges. <laughs> it's just the only thing left. <laughs> The next single is coming out independently. Is that because they already have a very clear identity as a band and feel the need to shield it? And also, no one signed us. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Um, no, we're, we're, it's, I'm, I'm very pleased with it because we we sort of stumbled into this way of doing things. I think we had we wanted to do it, but I think it's the way that things are going now. It's purely because, like Ryan said, no one like it didn't work in the traditional manner for us people uh, signing you up and that kind of thing so we've now uh, we've done our last two singles independently yeah. and it, it just feels right to do this one the same way um, and it's not it's not like we're sticking to some huge indie aesthetic or anything yeah. I think it's just I mean that is important but I think it's just the fact that the, the other two were right for us they were the perfect things for that point in time 
and we feel like this is going to be the one as well. No one's going to interfere with it. That's we get it. to decide the, the artwork. Thing. Yeah, yeah. like we talk about creating a world, you know, and and, 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 and our world can only be created by one of us four. You know, no one, no outside force can can um, direct it. You know, and so I, uh, I think we would hate for anyone else to take over artwork or um, choosing uh, what we would go down um, song for production and whatnot. Yeah, but like yeah, right, right, like major record labels, that doesn't. Kind of seems unnecessary for us at this moment in time. Yeah. It's like the song's still going to get on the radio anyway because it's a good tune and like you know people have heard of us already. We've already kind of uh, built uh, some sort of profile, I guess. So pe people are aware of us, and I'm sure people will hear it. So I think, I think there's nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with just hard work. That's right. Like, we just got to keep working hard, and people will eventually keep on practice. keeping on. Yeah. <laughs> Joseph once said his best gig ever was Orphan Boy on his 19th birthday. And then last September they shared lineup with them at the Bowling Gate. How did that feel? We play, yeah, we played with them well, loads of well, times. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, They're very, very dear friends of ours, so it is. Uh, it's, not just, uh, it's not just that we went to sort of see them, it's that that was the sort of highlight of our social calendar, our <laughs> friends doing this gig and we all just went, it was good. Well, that particular night wasn't... Uh, that much of a big deal because, as I say, we've, we've played with them quite a few times. They, they were living in Manchester before us, and they really kind of took us under their wing. Uh, and we became very good friends with them, and we often played together and developed. Both of us developed quite a, a loyal following in Manchester. And we was in and they both crossed of, yeah, over. We was in sort of the same boat as them when we moved to Manchester because they were from a seaside town on the opposite coast. And we thought, oh, we just felt sort of kitchen with them. And they've just great lads as well. Uh, but it was, yeah, it was always a pleasure to play with them because they're a fantastic band, mm. and it always fucking goes off when they play them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what, what I've started realising is that um, when people, when you talk to young, generally young people and stuff after a, after a, a show or whatever, they'll come up to you and talk to you about and they'll say how much they love this song. It means so much to. And I, I, it's, it's just starting to click that this band actually means as much to, to other people that I've never met before as other bands did for us when we were growing up. And so really, it's insane. And I, I think we're incredibly lucky to be a, able to do that, you know, to uh, and look at the people who want to listen to us and look at our stupid haircuts and stuff and like just think, oh, that, that it, you know, it just makes you feel a certain way, doesn't it? Remember when you... We won't name any, any names, but imagine when you sort of saw a band and you thought, wow, I want to look like that and I yeah. want to do, I want to do that sort of thing and just... For us to have that effect on people. Yeah, really, it's incredible. Really wonderful. After this interview, there's no way you haven't fallen for them. And believe me, we can relate to that. And it's not like you have to get over them, but still, stay tuned to Dean and Teacups. We have so many more sessions coming up. And until then, bye! Thank you.